Good morning everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, decided to revisit um, a movie from 1978, uh, which I haven't seen for quite a few years. Um, I'd actually forgotten how good this was. Uh, it's this one, Capricorn One. It stars James Brolin, uh, Hal Holbrook, who was uh, Clint Eastwood's boss um, in Magnum Force. He also played opposite Michael Douglas in a cracking thriller called The Star Chamber, um, which is another movie I need to revisit at some point soon. And that is a brilliant film. I would love to do uh, a review and a, a video on that one. Um, you've also got Brenda Vaccaro, who was in a lot of American dramas in the 70s. Telly Savalas, who was um, obviously Kojak. He also played in The Dirty Dozen and quite a few other movies. Uh, he was in, actually, on A Majesty's Secret Service, the Bond movie, uh, played Blofeld. So he's in there. Um, and you've also got James Brolin, uh, O.J. Simpson, before he became notorious for the crimes that he supposedly committed. Um, so it's a good cast. It's a good, solid cast. Um, what is it about? Um, I don't know whether you remember, I mean, this theory is still going about. There was a conspiracy theory uh, quite a few years ago that the moon landing um, didn't actually happen in 1969, um, uh, that it was all an elaborately staged hoax. Uh, that theory has been going around for quite a few years. It's not one that I personally subscribe to. Um, but Capricorn One taps into that very very nicely uh, what you've got uh, is the first manned space flight to Mars which is just about to launch um, when an unknown guy enters the capsule ushers everybody out and flies them all to a secret location where they meet um, the program uh, the head of the program played by Hal Holbrook um, who basically explains uh, that the life support system has just been found to be faulty and they would not have survived re-entry after the mission. Uh, they don't want the space program to, uh, well, they don't want people to stop funding the space program, so they decide to try and fake the landing and uh, coerce the uh, astronauts into taking part in broadcasts that look as if they were um, actually from the Red Planet. It's a cracking thriller if you've never seen it. As I say, it was made in 1978. It was probably one of the last great con um, thrillers of the 70s. Um, we had some good conspiracy thrillers uh, in that decade. You had The Conversation with Gene Hackman. Uh, you had The Parallax View starring uh, Warren Beatty, which I haven't personally seen, but I've heard very good things about. So that's another one that I need to track down. Um, you've got all the President's Men starring Dustin Hoffman and Robert Redford uh, to do with Watergate. So there were a lot of good uh, conspiracy thrillers around during that decade. And this one fits very, very nicely in with that one. Um, it's a very believable uh, movie. You watch it and it, 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 I must admit it does when you first see it cast doubts um, on whether the moon landing did happen. Um, as I say, I don't believe it for one second. I honestly believe that it did, uh, but it, it it does make it um, very probable that uh, that it, it could have been that way. So, I would highly recommend it. Uh, standout performances: Hal Holbrook is superb. Elliot Gold um, as a reporter, Robert Caulfield. Um, he's got a friend that works at NASA and becomes suspicious of what is going on there. He tells. Uh, the reporter about it and Elliot Gold decides to investigate and that's where it all starts to, uh, the whole thing starts to unravel. Um, Elliot Gold is absolutely brilliant in this. He's brilliant in everything. Um, I've heard he, he was in Friends, um, never saw him in that. Um, but I did enjoy his, uh, his movie, I think it was The Long Goodbye, a Raymond Chandler film. Um, so he was good in that but in, um, in Capricorn One he is abs absolutely brilliant in this. So I would absolutely recommend this. It, it's a cracking thriller. It, it is a film of two halves. Um, you've got the first hour, which is a bit of a slow burn, setting everything up for the breakneck pace, the breakneck pace of the second half. Um, it's scored by Jerry Goldsmith, who did the music for one of my favourite movies, The Swarm. Um, and that helps uh, move things along very, very nicely. Um, as a po minor point of interest, 
It was apparently released on a double bill. Um, a couple of years after the initial release, they decided to re-release it. Um, and they put it on a double bill with, of all things, Bill Forsyth's Gregory's Girl. Now, a friend of mine uh, brought this to my attention <laughs> because she, uh, she seemed to remember that that's how she saw it. And straight away, I thought, no, yeah, you've got that wrong. They wouldn't put Gregory's Girl on a double bill with... Um, with a conspiracy thriller like this it doesn't even sound right and i looked into it and sure enough it was released it's an odd an odd pairing of movies i must admit i <laughs> would not have thought of uh, putting it on a bill with that one but um yes yeah, so caroline you were right about that one i do apologize <laughs> spot on um i remember seeing this uh burton odian upon initial release and if i remember correctly um it was probably the last movie that was on uh, that particular week that I hadn't seen, so it, it was one of those that I'd, if I didn't really have a choice. It was either that or see something that I'd seen before, and I absolutely did not regret it. I loved every single second of it. Um, I've seen it quite a few times. Obviously, I bought it on VHS, and now I've uh, bought it on DVD and now Blu-ray. Um, so it, it is absolutely worth watching. It's a 10 out of 10, without a doubt. Um, and watching it this time round, I'd actually forgotten just how good this film was. So if you get the chance, grab a copy of this. You will absolutely not regret it, I promise you. That's Capricorn 1. Um, Amazon, eased off a bit this week. Um, all I've had is one book. Um, I just I saw this and really wanted it. The film that changed my life. It's basically 30 directors on the movies that made them want to um, make films. So looking forward to getting into that. I believe some of the movies mentioned here are, let's have a quick look, Apocalypse Now, Raging Bull, Citizen Kane, Rebel Without a Cause, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, hmm. uh, Brazil, The Godfather, some classic movies in there, and um, obviously the directors that uh, first saw them. So I'm looking forward to having a read of that. It's quite a short one this week. Actually, it isn't. It's seven minutes plus. <laughs> I've got another video ready to go uh, that has been lying in the vaults neglected for about two months. So I might post that one tomorrow because uh, I'm used to posting videos on uh, on Sundays. But seeing as I've actually done this one now and I'm just about to finish the, uh, the actual written review, I thought I'd release it now. So enjoy yourself, folks. Enjoy the weather and I will talk to you all again soon. Take care. Bye bye.